got this body, we got this mind. We identify ourselves with them. But they don't always do what we want them to do. Sometimes they turn on us. This is why we have to train them. So at the very least, there'll be something in the body and something in the mind that we can depend on. Your desire for true happiness. The Buddha says you can depend on that. As for the body, eventually it's going to have to leave you. But there are parts of the body you can train so they can be allies as you try to find true happiness. It's one of the reasons why we focus on the breath, or the various elements or properties of the body. The breath is the one that we can manipulate most easily. You can breathe long, short, deep, shallow, heavy, light. Or long in, short out, short in, long out. in a way that gives rise to a sense of ease. So whichever type of breathing feels good right now, experiment to find out what it is. And keep tabs on that, because you want the breath to be your ally. Now in training it, you have to listen to it in addition to telling it what to do. You can tell it what to do, and sometimes it'll, it'll respond in ways that can actually aggravate physical problems or mental problems. So think of this as a friendship where it takes a while to get to know the other person. And how do you get to know the, another person? You spend time with the other person. And you're observant. And you ask this and ask that, notice this, notice that. And you get a better and better sense of how much you can rely on this other person over time. And if you're reliable, then the other person's going to be more likely to be reliable as well. So as a John Lee says, spend a lot of time with your friend here. You're trying to become friends with the breath. Spend time. So you notice, when you breathe in, exactly how does it feel? We have some cartoon ideas in our head about what happens as the air comes in and out of the lungs, through the nose, through the mouth. But when you actually sit down and Sense the breath from inside. In other words, feel your body from inside. What does it feel like? Remembering that as it, in the Buddhist analysis, the breath element is actually the energy that allows the air to come in and go out. And where does that spread? How does it spread through the body? What are the energy channels? What are the energy centers? When the in-breath starts coming in, where does it feel like it starts? Around the navel? the middle of the chest. Ask yourself that question. And when the energy starts to spread, is there anything to get in the way? If there is, relax around it so the energy is allowed to flow smoothly through the body. And as you're gentle and inquisitive, with a breath like this, it'll start showing its potentials. Different ways of breathing that can have a different effect on the mind. Calming when you need to be calmed, energizing when you need to be energized. So you can develop an ally here in the body. Because you've got that other problem, the mind. And as I often say, the mind is like a committee. And sometimes it's like the Chicago City Council. All kinds of deals are being made. And it gets disruptive. Sometimes it's like that National Assembly they call in France at the end of the, the old regime. They were called in for one purpose and they end up, ended up throwing, overthrowing the king. So the parts of the mind that want to overthrow you, worries that want to take over. Anxiety that wants to take over, anger that wants to take over, fear, lust. And they're not your friends. Sometimes they come along looking very friendly. 
but then they can turn on you. And one of the ways of overcoming you is by getting hold of your breath and breathing in a way that makes it not only mentally painful to have this particular attitude in the head, in your mind, but also physically painful. And if you've got to do something to get it out of your system. So you want to seize the breath back, reappropriate the breath, make it yours. So when strange things are going on in the head, you can breathe calmly. Breathe in a way that gives you a sense of grounding. And then as the storms blow through the head, you don't have to get blown along with them. It's like the old days in Thailand when I was at the monastery. These huge storms that come in off the ocean. And all you can do is go back to your hut and just hunker down for the night and say, well, we'll see what kind of damage the storm is going to do tonight, but I'm going to stay in a place that's relatively safe. And then when the storm blew over, then you can go out and assess the damage. And as long as you weren't out in the storm, you're okay. And the damage always turned out to be manageable, even when it was pretty bad. We had that storm that came through here one time. Three, four hundred trees were blown down. One tree was blown against my hut. I kept scratching, scratching, scratching. I kept wondering when I was going to break through the window. Fortunately, it didn't. I came out, and it was, it was like old friends that had all been knocked over and killed in battle. But we survived. And so we live in this world, and we know that damaging things can happen. We just have to simply accept that fact and learn out how not to get damaged by them ourselves and how not to damage ourselves around these things. Because that's a simple fact of life. As the Buddha said, in terms of human speech, there are people who say kind things and unkind things, true things and untrue things. Things that are well-meaning, things that are not well-meaning. You have to simply take that as part of human life. That's what human speech is like. Well, the human condition as a whole is like that as well. Aging, illness, and death will come. And there's no place you can hide anywhere in the world where death can't reach you. So what are you going to do? You have to develop something in the mind that's not going to be affected by that. That's where you're safe. Realizing that things in life may get damaged, but you can always come back. If you've got the strength inside, if you've got the resources inside that you've developed, that you've trained. And so getting to know the body in this way gives you one important ally. And then you can gain other allies inside as well, remembering that desire for true happiness is not a selfish thing. and that you can develop good, noble qualities around it. Take wisdom, for example. The Buddha said, wisdom starts with the question, what, when I do it, will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness. Now, that wisdom is based on conviction that your actions do make a difference and that long-term is possible. And the realization also that in long-term is better than short-term. So it focuses on the fact that your actions are the really important things in life. You can make choices. You have that freedom to make choices, so you want to make the most of it. Wisdom is not simply accepting, well, things come and go, and I guess I've got to be okay with that. The Buddha is saying you have the potentials within you to find your happiness. Look at your intentions. Try to act in ways that are not overcome by greed, aversion, and delusion. And you find that you really will benefit. You've got that power within you. So here's wisdom that comes from the desire for true happiness, because that question is what gives direction to that desire.
compassion comes from the desire for true happiness, too. You realize that if you want your happiness to be long-term, you have to think about the happiness of others. Because if your happiness harms them, they're not going to stand for it. Purity in terms of your thoughts, words, and deeds, that comes from your desire for true happiness, too. Because you have to look at when you're doing something, does it actually harm yourself? Does it harm others? We don't just go on good intentions. We try to train them to be skillful intentions. Before you do something, ask yourself, what are, going, what are the results going to be? If you expect any harm, you don't do it. If you don't expect any harm, go ahead, give it a try. While you're doing it, look for results that are coming up in the immediate present, because not everything is going to wait until the next lifetime to give its results. Sometimes it's right immediate. You spit into the wind, it comes right back. You put your hand in the fire, and it's not going to be three lifetimes down the, down the line before you feel the pain. So sometimes you can see the results are coming up, they're harmful, you stop. You don't see anything harmful, keep on going. When the act is done, then you look at the long-term results. And if you realize that it caused harm, you talk it over with somebody else. If it didn't cause harm, take pride in the fact that you're you're progressing on the path. It's in this way, your good intentions become skillful intentions. And the wisdom of your desire to find something that's truly happy through your actions it becomes a reality. So you've got to learn which parts of the mind can you trust and which ones can you not trust. Same with the body. Which parts of the body can you work with which ones can you not work with? It's the nature of both body and mind that they're they're not totally dependable. But there are parts that you can depend on that you can turn into a path at least long enough to get to something that really is dependable, to something that doesn't change. Because that's possible too. As the Buddha said, there is a deathless element that the mind can touch. And where do we touch it? Right here, where you have where you're aware of the body and the breath in the present moment. When it opens up. Or when things open up inside, that, this is right where they'll open up. So you're in the right place right now. You're simply learning how to figure out which members of the Minds Committee can you trust, which properties of the body can you work with. And learn to identify with those for the time being. As for other parts of the body, other parts of the mind, that's where the teaching on not-self comes in right away. We talk about the idea of not-self as being fairly advanced along the path, but there are also aspects right at the very beginning. There are parts of your body that are not going to go the way you want them to be. Just remind yourself, they're not really mine. I've borrowed this body. It's like borrowed goods. You take care of it, because you're going to have to give it back someday. But you have to realize, okay, I will give it back someday. But the question then is, what can I get out of it in the meantime? It's like borrowing money from somebody to start a business. And with a lot of people, they borrow the money and they go out and they gamble with it. And they lose it and then they have nothing. They're worse off than they were before. Other people are wise. They figure out a good way to invest it. They get profit from it, and then they can give the original money back, and then they've got something to carry with them that really is theirs. It's the same with the body, same with the mind. We're going to have to lose these things someday. But if we use them properly in the meantime, we benefit the good qualities that get built into the mind. Don't leave us. And they can carry us through, even as the body ages, as it grows ill. Even as it dies, you've got something to carry with you. So even though the Buddha talks a lot about suffering, it's not because he's focusing on nothing but suffering. He wants you to realize okay, there is suffering in the world, and you have to admit that. If you try to deny it, then the mind is lying to itself. And part of it knows that it's lying to itself, which is why it gets very uneasy.
what we want to do here is find a happiness that's clear-eyed. It says, okay, even in spite of the fact that there's aging, illness, and death, and separation in the world, there's something we can do through our actions that goes beyond that. It starts out by trying to find allies in the body, allies in the mind. Starting with the breath in the body, and with your desire for true happiness in the mind. These things, if you stick with them, can bring you a lot of safety and bring you a lot of genuine well-being. So get on familiar terms with them. So you can see for yourself what their potentials are.